That's just awful. I, I really can't clap. I realize that, like, uh, Mitch did a great job leading that in our house band. Awesome today. But um, I remember being a worship leader, and I actually had to have, like, a designated clapper because I couldn't lead anyone clapping. But it's weird. I, I was just out here going and thinking, like, if I start clapping, will they start cl Let's try that again. It didn't work. I, I feel like I'll have to do the Jeb Bush please clap thing. I knew that was going to happen. I was thinking, the reason why I did that, though, and I was thinking about this all week, I think that starting a church is like starting applause, right? Like, and it's weird because in, when you start a church, and I know probably you haven't, um, but it's just like that. It's like you walk out that first day and you kind of go, and hope that someone else will join in because if they don't, you're just going to sort of put your hands in your pockets and walk away. Um, and I've actually been walking around a little bit this morning just thanking people. It's been eight years, almost eight years anyway. This month we'll celebrate eight years. Yeah, that's actually something worth applauding. Um, and Josiah is right. We are much older. It's so weird, like, how much can happen in eight years. I look like my daughter was like, a four-year-old running around. She used to push the trash can at Fat Daddy's, and she was shorter than the big trash can as we were cleaning up, and now she's a young woman, and it's just, time goes by so quickly, but I was thinking, like, I really appreciate the people who were there that first Sunday or that first year and sort of joined me in applauding, because otherwise I would have honestly just put my hands in my pockets and walked away, and I've done it before. My friend and I, in 1990, I think it was 97, uh, we had first moved here to York in 96, and he was a pastor, and I was a worship leader guy who couldn't lead applause for some reason, had no rhythm. Maybe that's what killed the church. But we actually tried to start a church, and we sort of showed up, and we started like leading the applause, and no one joined in, and we walked away with our hands in our pockets. So I know what it's like to try to start a church, and it to fail. And interestingly enough, this morning, um, they're probably four or five years into a church called Simple Church in St. Louis, Missouri, and we've started Action Church here in York, Pennsylvania. So out of that failure, sort of two churches happen, which I think is kind of cool. But, but here's the thing. When you start applause, you know, you start that, not the slow, sarcastic clap, maybe, but you start clapping. If no one joins in, you walk away. But if people join in, and I really appreciate the people who joined in right away, that sort of sustained the church. But here's the cool thing. You don't have to start right at the beginning. In fact, some of you started sort of applauding with us years later. And honestly, you might go, oh, well, it might have been better to be there at the first. No, like, you came just at the right time. I, I am so convinced of that. Over the years, and, and others who are with us from the beginning would kind of say, just when our hands started to get tired, and we're like, I don't know if we could do this, the right person would come on and they join in the applause and so starting a church is sort of like starting applause but one thing I've learned over the years is that um, there has to be something worth applauding like maybe you could sort of go into the mall and start slow clapping and people possibly might be bored enough to join you I don't even know um, depends on sort of how persuasive you are but after a while if there's nothing to applaud um, people are gonna walk away um, and so here's what we want to talk about this month. I was thinking about this. Like, this is not a series, and in the past we've sort of celebrated our birthday, you know, like, hey, we're one, hey, we're two, hey. I don't really even see doing that so much this year because we're eight, we're like pretty grown up now. Uh, maybe at 10 we'll just like have a big giant party or not, I don't know. But I'm just thinking like, what I'd like to do this year is not celebrate like, starting the church, because that's kind of ridiculous in a sense. It's like going, hey, remember that time I started the applause at the concert? That was awesome. No, that's not awesome. Like the main thing is who you were applauding, you know? Um, and that's sort of what this series is going to be like. We're not going to go, hey, remember the time Don started applauding and we joined? No, that's not it. It's about like, what are we applauding for? What is it that made people sort of show up at a nightclub on a Sunday morning and go, Man, it really looks weird in here with the lights on. So we turned the lights back off, and we had a band, and we started sort of applauding together this thing called church. Um, and that's a weird thing to applaud, really, if you think about it. Like this idea, this ancient idea that Jesus thought of. Um, but here's the thing I want to sort of 
lay out to you this morning. Um, maybe I was the lucky guy who got to kind of put my hands together first and just a few of us around a dinner table sort of started the idea of Action Church and then you came along and you started applauding. And, but here's the thing that happens, I realize, like over the years, um, some of you have joined lately maybe and you're kind of applauding. Have you ever kind of walked up and like, I don't even know what we're applauding now? <laughs> you know, so maybe this will be sort of a, a reminder of what Action Church is about, or maybe you've been applauding for a while and you're like, I don't even know if I'm for that anymore, but we're going to sort of remember this thing, the reason why we do what we do, the reason why it's called Manifesto, I actually, and this is a sign of, you know, that you probably should be in some sort of facility, I sat down and wrote a manifesto one night. It was in 2007, and I was like, this is what the church would be like. This is what Action Church would be like. And Josiah was reading it even this morning because he's actually putting out a nicer version of it. And he's like, this is like an angry email I would get from my mom. And I was like, yes, that's pretty much you've captured what the manifesto was. It was just sort of this angry email of like, we should do this. But in the end, really what it was is just standing up and going, I still believe in this thing that Jesus talked about, this thing called the church. In fact, Jesus said something. He said, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not prevail against it. And that's an interesting statement because it's actually true. Now, over the years, this whole church thing... um, God, and this is annoying because we spent last month trying to describe what Christian meant. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but the idea of church, you know, we sort of think of it now as a building or a, or a type of gathering, but all it meant is just gathering, a, a group, an ecclesia, if you will, if you want to have the right word for it. It was just a group of people, and he was saying, when Christians, and that's why we're following Christians with this idea of manifesto, When Christians got together, sort of the plural of Christian was church. You put Christians together, you get a church, and Jesus said that simple thing um, would be the most powerful force on the planet, and that's hard to believe if you're like me, and you've been really, really, really disappointed and disillusioned with church. Now, I will just tell you my background. Um, I was raised in church. Like, it wasn't a matter of, like, whether we went to church. Um, In fact, I was thinking this week that the way I was raised, we went to church Sunday morning, we went to church Sunday night, we went to church Wednesday night. Sometimes they would have these things called revivals that would go all week long, which is funny because I know they started going, hey, let's gather people and get them fired up. But by the end of a seven-day it's the opposite. Like, it's all, you're almost dead after seven days of revival preaching. And, like, to get out of church growing up, it was like sort of organizing a prison break. You know, like, I've got to, like, fake my death and, like, fake this sickness. And you'd have to start on, like, Wednesday if you were really, you know, like, I don't feel so good. You needed to plan ahead because mom was not going to believe you if you just showed up on Sunday morning and said you were sick. So you really had to plan ahead and plan, like, an ailment that, you know, was believable. Um, And then a lot of times she would be like, I'll just rub some dirt in it and get to church. So it was like really difficult to get out of church. So when I sort of moved out and put my clothes in a a big hefty garbage bag and stuck it in the back of my awesome hatchback with the two speakers rattling in the back, like I drove away and I was like, I'm not going to church again. They can't make me go to church. Um, Now over the years, like I got back into church and there's been different times. I would have to tell you, I'm someone who's walked away from church a couple times. Like there was a period of time after we tried to start a church here in um, 97 that we just didn't go to church for a while. We were like, man, I just don't see how this even works. Michelle and I didn't go for several years. Um, And then I got back into church and then I started working at a church and working at a church is sort of like working at a sausage factory. You're kind of like, I liked sausage until I saw how it was made and that was kind of the way church was. Like I thought I liked church until I saw how church was made. So I got disillusioned with church again, got fired, got out of church and found myself one night writing this crazy manifesto going, if there was a church, it would be called Action Church and we'd actually, um, and so that's what led me to sort of stand up that day um, and just put my hands together and hope someone joined me. And thankfully, um, you did. And we've been together sort of applauding this idea of church for eight 
years. And it was funny, well, Josiah sent me a link to a podcast, you know, that we've been talking about where they were talking about, like, what if there was a church and it was sort of like indie and sort of like done by non professionals and volunteers and like and it described action church and then a couple podcasts later they're like nah that wouldn't work that could never and it's so funny like they're at and i he was like we should email them i was like no they're they're right it really is impossible that it works we're the anomaly but but here's the thing back to sort of my crazy manifestos here's what i said that day um which still i believe with all my heart and and Please forgive it. It's sort of like an angry email um, from your, your mom, if your mom's like my mom, which maybe she's not. But anyway, it's, why start a new church was the question I asked. And I said that we wanted to integrate God's word into their thinking. And there meant you, even though I didn't know you. Um, quoted Romans 12. And activate God's principles in their hearts. I'll just warn you, there's a lot of activate, active, action. I was working on a theme here, and not very well. Uh, <laughs> activate God's principles in our life. That's sort of the, hey, we're not just going to talk about this. This is action church. We're going to do something. And then actually participate in the body of Christ. The church was made up of all different people, not just like a professional staff and then people who attended, but church was actually a body, a group of believers that all work together um, It all turned into this. After about three years, I figured out, like, that's a ridiculous amount of words to say love God, <laughs> love people, take action. And we've been doing that ever since. And um, so I guess at first, I'd just like to tell you thank you. And then I would like to say, but it's really not about us, is it? It's like if there wasn't something amazing that we could be part of, I don't think I would get up every Sunday. I, I was just thinking that, like, eight years, you know, 400 plus Sundays, um, and I'm still excited to get up and talk to you about this ancient book that most people don't even believe in anymore. And that's magical to me. That's amazing. And so I just want to read you what sort of inspired um, Action Church, and I want to talk to you a bit about it, and then let's talk about like what that means in the future. Um, Romans 12 says this, and we're not going to do a lot of reading today, but I just think this is so powerful. The Apostle Paul said, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. And let them, that's your bodies, be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. And this is truly the way to worship him. And don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And, and I want you to notice this right away because this really influences sort of what Action Church is all about. The Apostle Paul said that the way to worship God was by giving our bodies to him. By, and, and this goes back to the Christian series. If you weren't here, let me remind you that being a Christian is very simple. It's just saying Jesus is alive, Jesus is the Christ, and because he's reconciled our accounts, he gets to balance the checkbook. Because he is the king, the Lord of lords, and I am not, he is the new manager of my life. And that turns into this, which worship, declaring the worth of that Christ, um, it isn't a genre of music. I, I loved having the, the house band this morning, but we didn't have worship music. I'm an ex-worship leader, and I don't think there's a genre like that. I think any sort of music that would point to God and say, he is great, he is good, he is the king, would be worshiping, but it doesn't have to be music. And worship isn't something we do when we gather a building, and worship isn't, you know, like, hey, we had good worship this morning, or we had bad worship this morning, or I couldn't really worship. No, worship is actually doing something, which is, and this, it, this influences everything that we do. Action Church comes from the idea that worship is actually giving management of our bodies um, to Jesus. Um, and because of that, sort of back to the Christian thing, the idea that because of that, we would actually change. He said, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. And let me tell you right up front, this I think is something... And, uh, 
that's so sort of frustrating to me about Christians because we get this idea that as churches, because the Bible says don't be like the world, that that means we have to like try to be different. You don't need like any sort of like feathered headdress to be different. Like you really don't. Like we don't need special clothing. We don't need like homemade haircuts. There's nothing you need to do to be different than the world. Like you don't have to go there. Like all you have to do is this. Like, take any sort of statement that you make, you know, go like, yeah, the, you know, the average American cheats on their taxes. Well, then do the opposite. You know, like, the average American, you know, you know, they have sex outside of marriage all the time. The average American cheats on their wife. The average American steals small things at the office. The average American will lie. The average, anything, like, God doesn't want us to be average. So, to be different, to not cuss, you know, not I said not cuss, and I was probably going to cuss later, so that's bad. But like, to not be like the world, we really don't have to go, hey, here's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Let's, let's think of some sort of weird headgear we can wear. We don't have to. Because if we would just do things like Jesus said, if we would just actually give our bodies, like Paul said, and make them Jesus, our sacrifice to you is not like, and there's nothing wrong with raising your hands, there's not nothing wrong with dancing, there's nothing wrong with any of these things that we might consider worship, but our best worship, according to Paul, would be, I give myself to you, and I'm going to do what you say, Jesus, sometimes I'm going to have to say no to me to say yes to you, and that's going to make me very different <laughs> on the job site where I work, at the school that I attend, in the marriage that I'm, it's going to make you different. And so that idea, um, and then he says something pretty powerful. He says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And that's, that's what we do here. That's the, sort of the point of this talk every week. Like, my point of this talk is really not just Bible education. Like, if that were the case, we would get someone who was educated in the Bible, right? You understand that, like, I haven't been to seminary. I'm no different than you. I'm a guy who reads my Bible and we talk about it. But my goal every week, and the reason why I've come back week after week after week, and for some reason you keep showing up, I don't even understand that. And we talk about the Bible, and my hope is in some small way that God would change our mind. Just a little bit. Like if one thing I could say could change your mind about something, and you go, okay, well, I've just been doing it like that because everybody else does it like that. I mean, that's just normal. But Jesus said that I should forgive instead of hold a grudge. I should let it go. No, that's frozen. That's not Jesus. But I mean, there's literally like some small thing from Scripture that happens. If you could change your mind, you could change your life. And that's what Paul said here. Um, and I believe it, and that's the business of the preaching portion of Action Church. It's just, if I could use Scripture to sort of change your mind just a little bit, it would change your life. And many of you would say that, and I would say that. Like, over the past eight years, as I've let Jesus, not if I've integrated sermons into my life, like there's none of my sermons that are going to change your life, but if you take something from the Scripture and integrate it and put it in your life, put it into practice, it will actually change change your life. And then this final statement, um, Paul said, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing. And I, I want you to point out a couple things about this because we all struggle with this if you're a follower of Christ. Um, he says, you'll learn God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's awesome, but please remember, please remember, and I struggle with this, um, it says for you. So God, if, if we present our bodies to God. If we do what he says, if we go, I'm not my own, I am God's, I am a Christian, so Jesus has management of my life, and then we begin to change because we change our minds, God will actually show us sort of best case scenario for each of us, but please remember it's for you and for me. And so one thing that we like to do as Christians is go, okay, now I've got this figured out, I understand the will of God, all of you should be doing exactly what I'm doing. And that's where it gets really messy. And that's where we screw up every time. So please don't do that. Understand, we will get God's will for us, but not necessarily for everyone else. So please understand that even as I talk about sort of how we do church over this month, you know, and how we go, hey, here's what Action Church is about, and here's what we're going to do in the future, and here's what we'd like you to be part of. Understand, that's not me going... All churches should do this. I don't think all churches should do what we do. In fact, I am so freaking thankful that there are churches that are different than us. Because if everyone was like us, 
I would feel a lot of responsibility to make you happy. I really would. Like, and that would be a lot of pressure, and I don't like pressure that much. You know, but honestly, if every church was like Action Church, and you came to me and go, I really don't like this part of it, I'd go, oh, man, we need to do something. But instead, I can go, no, there's, there's lots of different kinds of church. This might not be the place for you. And we don't say that with any sort of arrogance. We just know we're all different. And this is a true about your life as well. Like, if God shows you, like, hey, this, and, and here's the great thing about this. Like, when this happens, when you understand that, that, hey, God has a plan for me, but it's not necessarily the same, like, you will have so much diversity in your friendships. Like, there's people in Action Church that are, like, Democrats. There are people that are Republicans. There are people who are, like, I'm a crazy homeschooler. I'll just admit that right now. You're like, last week you told us something horrible. I think that's worse. You know, <laughs> like, honestly, and there's people that go, well, I think homeschooling is ridiculous. All of these different things like that we could argue about, I would throw some really pertinent football reference in here, but I don't even know who's playing. I'm excited about the Puppy Bowl. That's all I care about. So sorry about that. I'm not very sports-minded, but like we have all different kinds of people, and we go, okay, God has shown his will for us, but we don't feel like we have to tell everyone else what to do. Now, here's why Action Church is weird, and <laughs> you're like, I think I have some ideas. Yes, you're right. In fact, if I met you in the last eight years, I always say the same thing, like, hey, glad you're here. <laughs> Some of you are nodding like, yes, you said that to me. Welcome. It's as weird as it looks because it really is, and we want to keep Action Church weird, actually, because here's the thing about this um, that struck me and sort of has inspired me this entire time and I think makes Action Church what it is today because that scripture is obviously for... Um, Christians. You know, it's not like, hey, make everyone else do what God says, or hey, make everyone else give their bodies as a sacrifice. No, it's a, it's a voluntary sacrificial thing we do. We go, God, you're the manager, and hey, we're not going to be like the rest of the world because we're going to be different because we're putting your principles into action. Now, that's for individuals, but we just, from the beginning, uh, I remember talking with Eric about this. Eric Brink was one of the people around the tables initially. Um, we believed from the beginning that this could also be true for a group of Christians, not just individuals. Like, as a church, we should put that into practice. Like, what that meant is, like, this isn't about us, and we don't have to do things like everyone else because we probably will be different. In fact, I was thinking, like, this whole part of, like, don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world, um, as a church, it's really easy because it's just normal for us to go, okay, now that we're a church, now that we're a corporation, now that we're a gathering of people, I mean, we sort of go, well, how are we going to act? And we sort of pick patterns from the world. It's just normal. Like, for example, like church doesn't have to be one of the things we decided from the beginning is church doesn't have to be a members-only club. And it's easy to make church into a club. It's sort of worked pretty well for that. You know, you have members, and members have certain... Now, I will admit, I'm um, trying to think of, I am part of one pretty exclusive club, and I don't, I don't like to sort of brag, but um, I'm a member of Sam's Club. Um, pretty large organization, pretty prestigious. Um, I have a card, I don't want to brag. Once again, like if you're not, I, I, I love you still, and I don't look down on you, but I have a card that I'm able to go into Sam's Club, um, to sort of wave it at the people. They let me through because I'm a member. And I'm able to go there, and I'm able to buy, I don't know if, you know, I know you can't if you're not part of the club, really, really large quantities of Cheetos, and that's exciting for me. Uh, but, but that's sort of the way church can be, right? Like, it's easy to turn church into a members-only club where you kind of go, okay, there's the members, and they sort of pay the bills, and, and they buy the merchandise, and they support this place, so they get one sort of treatment. And just sort of like Sands Club, which, once again, I don't want to brag, but once in a while, I could bring a guest if I want. So you could be, you could be my guest, and eh, we'll talk, you know. I'm not, I just can't bring anyone in there, but like, you could be my guest, and we come in, but you won't be treated the same as me, and you wouldn't actually be able to check out, because eh, you don't have the same privilege as I have. And that's easy for a church to become that. And we decided from the beginning, like, ugh. It, we're going to strive really hard not to let that happen. In fact, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to make sure that we're a church, and we still struggle with this because it's so easy to go, well, you know, they've been here a long time, and they do a lot of stuff, so let's start 
catering to those people, but actually we decided from the beginning that Action Church would be the opposite. Like Action Church would be designed for the people who were not the regular attenders. Action Church would be designed for people, we actually built this place for you if you go, I'm not even a Christian, I don't even know if I like church, we built this for you. In fact, we do this for you. And it shows itself in some really weird ways. I remember from the very beginning, Michelle came to me and my wife, and she's like, um, we should have food. And I was like, mm-hmm, yes, I'm with you so far. And she said, you know, like, maybe we'll provide donuts. And I was like, whoa, 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 what do you mean provide donuts? You know, I was like, I'm thinking, like, maybe the workers. This is so funny because this was for me, the idiot who wrote the manifesto. I was like, I think the people who come set up, let's have donuts for them and coffee. And then... You know, clearly we'll put that away when the rest of the people come because we can't provide donuts for everyone. I mean, that would be, and she's like, no, if we're going to do this and we're going to be the church that's for the people, not just for the members, like, let's not have members and let's actually, like, buy donuts for everyone. And I was like, there might be eight or ten people there. That's going to get expensive after one. But, I mean, we buy thousands of, of maple donuts, and believe me, they're maple because we made a switch to, like, Wise brand for a while, and the church almost died. So it's a very important. You like your freaking maple donuts. Okay. Um, that's the one thing we can all agree on. But isn't it funny? Like, that is weird, and it's still weird to people. are like, so you just put, like, Starbucks coffee and maple donuts out and just go, hey, even if you don't even want to come into the service, just come have some. Like, yeah, because it's not about the members, not just about the people who serve. It's about everyone first. And, um, and that's weird. That's very weird. Um, and it doesn't make sense in the way we do things in the world. Even like I was thinking, like, I go to Lowe's. I'm bragging again. I get free coffee at Lowe's. I don't, you know, like, I, you might not. But, but it's weird. Like, even at Lowe's, there's a contractor area, and they've got free coffee. But, oh, my goodness, they don't put that out on Sunday morning because, con- you know, it's so weird. Like, just naturally, we think, well, let's provide the best for the people who are most connected and the worst for the people who are least connected. And we decided from Scripture and just kind of from, like, this is the way we'll do things. Let's do the opposite. But it's weird. So church isn't, it's not members only. We don't even have membership. In fact, we say, you know, the best day, and this is sort of going to be a lot down for some of you, the best day is your first day because we don't require anything of you. We don't expect anything of you. We want to give you a gift and feed you donuts, and you can walk away shaking your head if you want. And we don't even, you know, like we're not even going to follow up with you. But um, here's another thing. Like teaching the Bible is the business in many cases of, of the church. It's changing minds with the Bible. That's, that's really all we're going to do from up here. Like, we're going to have lots of other things in the church, but basically one of the most important things that I do every week is I go, here's what Scripture says, and here's what it means in light of the way we live today. Here's what it means still, and I hope that you'll change your mind because of Scripture, not because what I say. But it's interesting that really the only model that we have in our world is to go, well, that sort of turns into like a college course. Like, and it's so easy for church to sort of feel like a community college where you're like, oh, there's a professor and he knows and he's got this information that you have to have if you're going to go to heaven and not to hell, which is even better than college. Well, not really, but like I go, you can't get a job without this. We say you'll go to hell unless you know what we say. So it sort of fills the course up and we go, hey, you should know this and I'm the professor and we sort of go, you know, people will pass through and they'll listen or maybe not listen, but the main thing is we keep the classes full and we keep sort of the college funded, and church is really easy to do like that because we're in the information business. Um, But we decided from the beginning that, wow, we would just have average people talking about Christ in a way that hopefully people could understand and never say to you, like, we know, so you need to be here and you need to learn from us because we know better. In fact, we were kind of like Home Depot, and I know I just said we weren't supposed to copy the ways of the world, and I'm just saying we copied the ways of the world, so sue us, but basically kind of like Home Depot going, you can do it, we can help, and my desire every week is not to go, hey, I know something about the Bible, you'll never know because you're not like me, and said, I just want to kind of point at the Bible, and unlike a college professor who's kind of like, I know this, and you need to take notes, just go, can you believe this is in here, and I'm just a guy just like you, just reading this, you should read this sometime because it's amazing, um, Another thing is we are a corporation, but we decided from the beginning, like this whole 
don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world meant that even though we are a corporation, we're a 501c3 organization, a nonprofit, that we wouldn't act like a corporation. And that's difficult because it's so weird to go, well, we're a group of people acting together. I mean, so that just sort of makes sense that you fall into this sort of corporate language and we sort of have committees and we have, you know, uh, you know, we have leadership based on corporate structure and all, and it's so easy to fall into that. And I'm not saying like, oh, you're bad if you do it at other churches, this is for us. But we decided from the beginning we wouldn't do that. And not because we just wanted to be different or, hey, we're, we're going to be all indie and crazy. It was just literally these words that Jesus said in Matthew 20 have been stuck in my head ever since we first started this thing. We put them on a shirt a few years ago. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 20, 26, he said, but among you it will be different. And whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. See, in order to try to be like Jesus, in order to do what Jesus said, we sort of had to invert the pyramid. Like if you have a corporation, generally you have a pyramid, and the boss is on top, and then middle management, and layer after layer after layer, and eventually you have sort of the, the customers or the consumers. Well, what Jesus said is it's the opposite, that we would turn the pyramid upside down, and at the bottom you would have the, the biggest leader, not the biggest loser. That's something different. Pretty much the same thing, actually, if you think about it. The person who served the most would be responsible for everyone, and then next would be people who are responsible for other people because they serve the next most, and it was basically based on the sort of contest, like whoever could give away the most and serve the most would become the leader instead of the opposite. We don't ever look to someone and go, well, they're the boss, we have to do what they say. We go, well, they serve us, and so they're responsible for us, and it's just, it makes us weird. I understand that, and it's so funny to just kind of describe that because it doesn't compute. Um, except inside of a church. And here's another one that's really weird, and I, and I know like some of you are going to be happy about this, some of you aren't happy about this, but just because we're Americans doesn't mean we're a democracy. We never vote on anything, um, which eh, I'm pretty tired of the voting thing right now since it's in the news all the time, but, but there's times we go, well, shouldn't we just vote on that, or shouldn't we just have a committee meeting about that, and it's not that we're against meetings, or not that we just want to do what we want to do, but that's another idea that doesn't work very well at Action Church. Now, now here's the thing. That doesn't mean um, sort of the wedding singer <laughs> plan goes into thing and I go, you will do whatever I say because I have the microphone. That's not it. It's the fact that we just believe in freedom and the fact that you get to vote every week with your feet and with your wallet. Like if you don't join in and if you don't give, this thing ceases to exist. But it's a pretty weird concept if you think about it. Like we will do, if you look around at this place, like last, this year, last time, last time this year, um, I said that backwards. I don't know what's wrong with me. This time last year, this place was still basically a nightclub. We were just gutting this place this time. Um, and all of that happened um, without ever having like a vote. We didn't have meetings. We just kind of went, Jason's the guy to lead it. I felt like he was the guy to lead it. He led us in that. He sacrificed the most. He spent hours, hundreds of hours on this. And we sort of followed that. We sort of pitched in our money. And if we were a corporation, it would have never worked because um, I can tell you this now, we didn't have the money when we started. We had about half enough money. Looking back, it was so funny, almost exactly half, half as much money. Um, end of year reports, with the building renovation and all the new supplies and furniture and everything we bought, about 60000 right under $60,000 was spent last year on this renovation, which, I mean, is like a good kitchen remodel in the world we live in, which is crazy. And that was amazing in itself. But we had $30,000 in the bank when we started. So we literally cash flowed the rest of that during the year, thanks to you, thanks to you giving, thanks to you putting your sweat equity in. But, but here's the thing, all of that happened um, without a committee, without a vote, without a meeting, just people going, hey, I'm, I'm in. And some people weren't in. And that was okay, too. People said, I don't, I don't really want to do that. And they didn't. Um, so it wasn't like we didn't have a say. But I'm just, I, I just want to tell you these things because the reason why we're weird is because we don't necessarily have to do um, the way things are things the way everyone else does. Because of this verse, because of what Paul said, like if we're Christians, we don't have to 
And, and I feel like what that turns into is this. Um, this whole thing really started with this idea of like, what if there was a place? We, we put together this, and, and this was the first thing that sort of we submitted to people go, this is what Action Church will be. And I remember Eric and I just talking about this. Like, what if there was a place if you could be yourself and still fit in? Um, what if there was a place that cared more about doing good in the community than looking good to the community? And they would never lecture you or bore you or waste your time and where your skills and experiences could actually make a difference in York County, no matter who you were. And where each week you heard one practical idea of how to live a more satisfying, meaningful life instead of being overloaded with pointless information. See, it's amazing how that came to be. And I look at you like, it was so neat just kind of walking through and seeing like, there are skills that you didn't have any idea that could be used in church, and I've seen you use them. We were talking about that, and it was up on Facebook, I think, last week. We have the, did the nursery upgrade, and Amber made a tree out of just material. When I said to her, like, could you pad the pole and turn it into a tree trunk, I was imagining just sort of this brown tube to put around it and maybe some green around the top and go, that's a tree, kids. Trust me. That, you know. But she took it and actually made a tree out of fabric. But I bet she never thought, like, well, I could use my sewing machine to serve church and serve God. I mean, it just doesn't happen. And, like, there were people who sanded. There were people who sang. There were people who did all sorts of things in the name of serving others that you never would. And we're just beginning. Um, so I want the guys to come back up here. But I just want to tell you this. Um, eight years later... I'm still as happy as ever to stand up and just applaud this idea of church. I believe in it. Like, I believe in it more than ever. And I've seen the amazing things that can happen. Sort of the amazing things, like just talking to Gene this week about, like, you guys gathered and gave the stuff for Ronald McDonald House last week in, you know, even in spite of the blizzard, and just talking to that family who had started that, going, hey, this all started with our son had cancer, and we realized that, there wasn't anything there for him. And just, you can do amazing things if you would just be willing to kind of stand up with us and put your hands together and clap for this idea um, that when Christians gather, it's powerful. Jesus said the gates of hell. Would, I, I would tell you this. I was thinking about that. It doesn't seem like sort of a powerful thing to just sort of applaud. Um, we all sort of go, well, you know, maybe it'd be great if I was on stage, but just clapping, that's no big deal. But I want you to think about this in closing. Um, because people applauded, um, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, um, a guy named Barack Obama became our president eight years ago. And right now, right now, you know, as much as we're sort of maybe you're tired of the whole political thing, all of these candidates, if they could just get people to actually applaud, please clap. You know, like, I think he said that under his breath, couldn't believe that no one was clapping. But I think, like, you would be so amazed to think of, like, just the power of people standing up and clapping. We, we create our hit movies. We create hit music. We create millions of dollars. And the power that runs the free world is based on people going, I get behind that idea. I applaud that idea. I applaud that person. Um, and I've just come to this conclusion, and I will just tell you, like, you might be excited about politics, but it's not going to change the world. There's always something in it, and you go, yeah, but because of that, because of money, or because of power, because it's not going to do it. And you might be excited about education, and I am. I think education's powerful, even though I'm not very educated. But you know what? There's a certain point where education is not going to fix the world. And you go, it's because of money. It's because of power. It's because of what? And, and business, I, I love the, I'm a small business owner, and I really think, like, I wish everybody, even though it's not for everyone, like, the power of just having your own business and, and growing your own business, I think it's a great thing, and I think it's fantastic, but it's not going to change the world. And the only thing, honestly, of all the things I've tried, of all the things I see that have potential to change our world is this one thing, which is church, which is just Christians gathering together and going, we applaud Jesus. We, applaud, we, we will make Jesus famous. We will do what he said. And amazing, amazing, amazing things will happen. And I hope you'll be part of that, um, not just in the upcoming month, but in the upcoming years. Dear Jesus, God, we are... Uh, we're grateful to you. It's 
sort of both humbling and amazing to go, man, we're still here after eight years. I just didn't see that coming. But it's also sort of frustrating in a sense of going, man, there's just so much more that can happen. God, we, we've just scratched the surface. And God, I'm so thankful to people who have been here all along, sort of like joined in from the very beginning. But God, I'm super, super thankful for people who are just getting here. Because God, they have no idea, like, you sent them for something. And God, I just pray that they would join in and that we would be a great applause to you here in York County and beyond. In your name we pray, amen.